Welcome back to Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Joe and Lisa this morning talking to you. So um, we want to thank everyone for all your subscribes and your thumbs up and your um, uh, you know little comments. We appreciate every one of them. And thank you so much for recommending our videos. That's highly appreciated. So uh, when the, we promised you an update in an earlier video on the presidential election here. There's a runoff between Daniel Naboa and uh, Luisa Gonzalez. And so we're going to bring you that update today. Yeah. So, um, you know, as most elections, uh, opinions are divided. And Lisa and I, we, we don't vote in the elections here, even though we're allowed to as uh, permanent residents. We feel that um, voting is a privilege that should be afforded only to actual citizens. And so since we haven't become citizens yet, we don't participate. So I believe that for every country, that only citizens should be allowed to vote. And um, we feel pretty strongly about that. But we feel like other countries try to manipulate Ecuador uh, for their own benefits. And we just don't feel like that's good. Yeah. Um, certainly, we don't need American influence here in our elections. And we don't need Chinese influence or any other country's influence. Ecuadorians are perfectly capable of making their own decisions for their own country. Um, once we're citizens, we have proven that we've invested ourselves to the point that we deserve to vote. Yeah, and, you know, we we follow what happens in politics, but we don't know all the ramifications and the details and the history like the Ecuadorians do. And to impose our opinions would just not be right. That's right. Um, and the, the, the opinions we're giving you today are what Ecuadorian people are telling us. That, the media, I mean, a lot of it came from a lot of different places. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Daniel Noboa won the election. Uh, I think it was 48 to 52, so not a huge mm -hmm. margin, but, yeah. you know, decidable one. And so, um, Luisa, she was the candidate that was chosen evidently by Correa, former president and um, a big socialist. A lot of people were worried about having Korea socialistic policies in effect again if she was elected. So, um, you know, there's a lot of Koreaistas, we call them here still, but there's a lot of people who didn't want that. And, um, you know, President Lasso, who is still the current president outgoing, um, he has been ruling by decree since he declared the death cross. Well, because there's nobody else to agree or disagree with him because they're all gone. Yeah, so, and, and that, under the rules of the death cross, the entire um, assembly is negated, yeah. and he has to rule by decree. He does, but there's also, um, there's checks and balances. So, they do have a uh, constitutional court that basically, he, he can only rule by decree as long as it falls within the constitutional court guidelines. That's true. So, uh, one of the things he may do by decree here, he's talked about is, increasing the penalties uh, for crimes. Right now, murder only gets you 15 years here in Ecuador, mm -hmm. if that. If that. And so, you know, that's a problem. We are having a lot of crime in Ecuador right now. And as you, some of you saw, a presidential candidate was assassinated. Mm -hmm. And um, so Lasso wants to pass a decree that says that if you're involved in assassination, you get the death penalty. Yeah. Or also for a kidnapping. Yeah, kidnap I mean, they're really um, vicious crimes. And one of the main things that people were concerned about through this election was getting crime under control. Because in the last three years, the crime, the really bad crimes have really gotten out of control. Ooh, it's windy today. It is windy. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and the, the two main things on Ecuadorians' hearts, it seems to me, and everything I've read and all the Ecuadorians I'm talking to, number one, they want the crime to go away. Yeah. And um, number two, they want the economy to get better. Mm -hmm. So they're concerned about crime and they're concerned about um, the poor people of Ecuador yeah. and they'd like to have more job opportunities, et cetera. So that has been Naboa's primary campaign points is mm -hmm. those two things. And um, we'll see. They say neither candidate is going to be real strong in the crime department because they don't have much experience. Um, so it's possible that Naboa will put in, and this is my understanding, 
he's going to put in a cabinet around him that does have that experience. So we'll see what he can get done in the 18 months that he has to deal with this. If he does anything at all to the positive side, we feel like he would probably be reelected. Yeah, I mean, he's got a um, opportunity to really show what he can and can't do. But um, they are talking about increasing training for um, the police and getting them better equipment, better gear, so that they can uh, be stronger and police better. Yeah, and so, you know, the crime is everywhere, but primarily we see it in why kill and Quito, a lot of gang related crimes. Yeah, the bigger cities always are going to have worse crime. But we do have it here in Vilcabamba. There's been mm -hmm. an increase. Um, we had about a month where we had a lull. We didn't have much happening. Mm -hmm. Now all of a sudden we've had, you know, three or four break ins in a row. Um, and I, I have to tell you, you know, this stuff comes out on Telegram or Facebook, so I, I can't verify a lot of it. So I won't, you know, speak to the particulars of these crimes. Mm -hmm. because I think it'd be doing an injustice. Um, but these things do happen. If you're going to move here and um, live here, you need to take uh, measures to protect yourself. Well, and I would say too, I mean, it's we've seen so many people come here and they move here and they immediately buy property way out in the middle of nowhere. You don't have any neighbors around you to help you with what happens in your area. And you really need to get to know the area. You need to get to know the people before you jump in there and invest like that. Yeah, and understand, you know, how to protect your investments and mm -hmm. and how uh, not to be caught unguarded. Uh, so yeah, you know, the next 18 months is gonna mean a lot for this country. I think before I'd rush down here and buy a bunch of land, I might rent for a little while and yeah. see how that's looking. Um, you know, we still feel very safe here. We're, we're, we are not oblivious to the crime that's happened around us. Correct. And we keep an eye out for those things. And mm -hmm. uh, most of you know we have our security systems in place. Mm -hmm. And um, we still stand by that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, be, be careful with what you do. And, and we'll see how this thing works out. I think that Naboa, you know, He's going to be the youngest president ever at 35 years old. And uh, his father was, still is the king of bananas here in Ecuador. He's the richest man in Ecuador, and he worked for his father, decided to leave the father's business to become president. So um, Naboa knows a lot about business, and one of the things he wants to do is increase foreign investments in Ecuador. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that that doesn't mean sell more oil to China. That's not it. He wants to increase oil production by 20% for Ecuadorian use. Yeah, so, that's what we've read. Yeah. So we'll see how it goes. But he, he is big. He's a businessman. So he's going to be looking for business opportunities that allow more businesses to open up, which will employ more people, which will hopefully help with the economy. And, you know, a lot of people here are very touchy on the subject of oil because these oil spills in the Amazon yeah. Um, and the rivers have caused some problems worldwide. And mm -hmm. so um, trying to make sure we have the increases that we need to keep the country running properly, uh, both financially and energy-wise, without sacrificing the wonderful natural environment of Ecuador. Ecuador is a gorgeous country, um, lots of great water resources and things, and land resources and minerals, obviously. Um, everybody wants a piece of that. Everybody in the world. There's a lot of greed there. And I don't think people are necessarily opposed to mining the minerals, but it's how you go about it. And if you are destroying the land around you to be able to get to that just over greed, that's not going to go over very well. President Correa is, um, you know, the president quite a ways back. Yeah. Uh, very Not very popular anymore. He's actually been exiled from the country but there's still a very strong segment of the population that love him to death. Um, you know, he gave away a lot of free stuff. So um, mm -hmm. that cost the country long term. Yeah. Uh, but individuals like those socialist policies and, you know, the discounts on propane and things like that, you know, these uh, government subsidies, let me say that. Well, and it's really hard. I mean, there's a lot of countries around the world that 
put in a lot of socialist programs, but they didn't have enough revenue to maintain them. And so after you go through a generation of people used to those subsidies, the idea of taking it away or finding a way to support it um, is not always very well received anywhere in the world. So that's kind of where we're at. Um, President Daniel Naboa will take over and um, I, it, he's got 18 months to prove himself, 18 months to show the people he's serious about um, reducing crime and serious about helping the economy. And then he'll be up for re-election again. And Louisa will have another opportunity. Yeah, yeah. As the world turns in politics around the world. <laughs> politics is the same everywhere. It is. Um, I will say this election went very well. Mm. There was violence leading up to the election. But during the election, there was no yeah. real violence that I saw. Um, president Lasso, the outgoing president, was very strong in his speeches to people about a peaceful election and not... Um, allowing violence to occur. And so, um, you know, they had armed guards at voting booths and things like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I don't think there's any election interference this time, uh, as we have seen here in the past, we think. Yeah. Um, much as there is in the U.S. And around the world. And around the world. But we didn't see any of that this time that anyone's pointed out to us anyway. Well, there was no midnight changing of yeah. numbers. In the deep, dark night. Yeah. So um, it looks like it was on the up and up, and, um, you know, the best person won. 18 months is going to tell us a real good story. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. All right, so that's our update from Ecuador. Um, keep a close eye on it, watch it, and be careful with some of these mainstream um, newspapers that would call us a banana republic. We don't like it. Ecuadorians don't like that. And it's untrue. This is not a banana republic. It is not. It's not a third world country. Nope. And uh, so they need to have some respect for Ecuador. And quite frankly, they should look at their own home. Exactly right. All right. So that's all we have for today. Thanks a million. Mm -hmm.